Ever since I started making trade history videos, the Rays have been the most requested subject by far. I've been putting it off for some time because of the amount of research it would take, but I'm happy to report that she's ready and done. I obviously can't do their whole franchise history because that video would be 24 hours long. So we're just going to kick it back to 2017 and detail the last five years of roster turnover that turned the Rays from a mediocre team with no identity to a cutting edge force to be reckoned with. If I miss any trades you're thinking of, it's because I did it on purpose to anger you and you should leave a comment about it. Jokes aside, with about 25 significant trades to go through, this is going to be quite a ride. All right, goggles on, folks. We're about to dive in. It's the end of the 2017 season. The Rays have just concluded an 80-win year, their fourth losing season in a row, and their third season under the guide of Kevin Cash. With pressure building to return to relevancy, an off-season of change was needed. The Rays didn't have the funds, as we all know, but they did have the right people in charge with a great eye for talent. The Rays acquired utility infielder Joey Wendell as their first big move of the 2017 17 offseason. After he got under 40 games of run at the MOB level, Wendell became a Rays staple for four seasons, posting a 106 OPS plus in 400 games while manning five different positions. The only drawback here is what they gave up in catching prospect Jonah Heim, who turned into a solid big leaguer after another trade sent him from Oakland to Texas. This offseason signaled the end of an era in Tampa Bay as well, as they traded the best player in franchise history in Evan Longoria. The Rays avoided paying the $82 million remaining on the last five years of his extension, instead only having to eat $13 million in this trade. The prospect haul they got in return was far from impressive, but with the goal of cutting costs, Tampa Bay did what they had to do. Longoria remained productive while healthy, but nowhere near his best years in Tampa Bay. The Rays also found their breakout bat in February, flipping prospect Luis Renjifo for designated hitter CJ Krohn. Krohn had been a steady presence in the Angels lineup for four years, but was coming off his most disappointing season when Tampa Bay decided to buy low. In turn, he posted a 30 home run season in his lone year in Tampa Bay. They also decided to cut costs with another one-year bat in Corey Dickerson. After a career year in 2017 where he made the All-Star team and hit 27 home runs, the Rays flipped him to the Pirates where he hit 300 in the 2018 season. This, of course, would not be the only trade these two teams made this season, but we'll get back to that later. The Rays continued selling off players despite posting a winning record through the first two months of the season. They flipped Alex Colomay and Denard Spann to the Mariners for prospects who would never pan out. It'd be very active come July, though. Prior to their big splash, they swapped with the Boston Red Sox, trading away Nathan Eovaldi. I honestly forgot Eovaldi was ever a Ray, but he would become a Boston legend, tossing 22 playoff innings to help them win the World Series that year. He'd become a staple for the Red Sox for four seasons after the fact as well. Come deadline day six days later, the Rays remained one of the most active teams, but decided to buy and sell simultaneously. They gave up hot-hitting catcher Wilson Ramos to the Phillies for a player to be named later, while also acquiring Tommy Pham from the Cardinals, who were having a rare, mediocre season. Pham had his best career year with the Rays, posting incredible second half numbers that led into a solid 2019 season as well. But none of the aforementioned trades compared to the blockbuster of the 2018 season, a shocking franchise altering move for both parties. It's been talked about to death, so I'll keep it brief here. After middling to a 42 and 49 record halfway through July, the Pirates rattled off an unbelievable 11 game win streak to catapult themselves back into contention. Come the deadline, they had a 56 and 52 record, and the front office decided to go for it. In an effort to bolster a decent rotation to put it over the edge, they worked with the Rays to acquire two-time All-Star Chris Archer, who had become one of the best pitchers in Tampa Bay franchise history to that point. Archer had struck out at least 230 batters and thrown over 200 innings in each of the last three seasons, so his price tag obviously would not be cheap. The Pirates gave up a monster haul, including their number one prospect Tyler Glass now, number two prospect Austin Meadows, and newly drafted Shane Boss. Here's what I'll say about this trade. I think the Pirates get a tinge of unfair criticism. I'm all for small market teams making big moves to go for it, and in this case, Archer was just very disappointing for them and never the same. On the other side of things, Glass now has been great when he's been healthy, but has never thrown over 90 innings in any season. Meadows did admittedly have a great 2019 All-Star season and solid 2021 season, and would turn into a great trade down the line for the Rays as well. He's probably the best part of this deal. With Shane Boz, it's a bit too early to tell. We'll likely get a clearer idea in 2023, but if he's good, that might change my mind about this trade. So if Archer Archer had pitched like he had shown he was capable of before, I think this trade would have been fine. Still quite a price to pay for Pittsburgh, but ultimately fine in the pursuit of getting to the playoffs. Obviously, this was not the case, and the rest was history. Despite hovering just a smidge over 500 at the deadline, the Rays put together a solid last few months of the season and achieved their first 91 campaign since 2013. This came off the back of Blake Snell's incredible Cy Young season and a dominant stable of reliable relievers, yet the club still finished seven wins shy of a wildcard berth in the tough 
American League. Still, the progress was there heading into a big offseason. After the 2018 season, the Rays would make two fantastic trades that would go on to define their franchise for years to come. First, they corresponded with the Mariners again, a team which they traded with a ton. They worked to acquire Mike Zunino, a former number three overall pick who struggled to find his footing consistently throughout six years in Seattle, and they didn't give up much to get him. In turn, Zunino became a somewhat reliable backstop for the Rays, and while he definitely had his ups and downs offensively, he had a stellar 2021 season, which was also the first time he made the All-Star team. Considering that the prospect capital they gave up hasn't resulted in much to this point, this was a solid move for their roster depth. Better yet was their acquisition of Yandy Diaz from Cleveland in a three-team swap that also involved the Mariners again. Tampa Bay only gave up Jake Bowers in this deal to get Diaz, who never really got a fair shot in Cleveland's organization due to the amount of talent on their roster at this time. Yandy has proved to be a great big leaguer in his time in Tampa Bay, especially last season where he got MVP votes for the first time. He's never posted an OPS Plus below 110 in any of his seasons with the Rays, and he's played great defense. Big win there as well. With Diaz and Zunino locked up for the foreseeable future, the Rays pressed on into 2019 with a revamped roster, hoping to return to the playoffs for the first time in six years. With the additions of Charlie Morton and Avisel Garcia through free agency, plus the call-ups of Willie Adamas and Brandon Lau, that goal seemed very achievable. Through May 10th, they were 10 games over 500 and first in the American League East before making yet another impact move. The Mets decided to cut ties with Travis Darno, releasing him after some productive but injury-plagued years. After a cup of coffee in LA, the Rays scooped him up. Darno found his footing in a potent Rays lineup, and though he'd be here for just this year, he made a count in a contract year, playing in over 100 games and tying a career high in home runs. The Rays steamrolled ahead, looking to make more big moves in July as another trade deadline quickly approached. They quietly acquired one of the nastiest arms in their bullpen to date in a trade with Texas, where they flipped infield prospect Nick Solak to add Pete Fairbanks to their bullpen. Though he wouldn't make much noise in 2019, Fairbanks would go on to be one of the best arms on the team, pitching over 90 innings of dominant relief through three seasons. Tampa Bay also made one more splash on deadline day itself, dealing with their interstate counterpart in the Miami Marlins. They shipped off trusted opener Ryan Stanek and outfield prospect Jesus Sanchez for a pair of reliever arms, the most notable one being Nick Anderson. The Rays got an absolute monster in Nick Anderson. Prior to some injuries, Anderson was one of the best relievers in baseball and vital to the success of their upcoming 2020 season. With a series of solid free agent signings, supplemental roster additions, and smart trades, the Rays pieced together a fearsome roster that won 96 games and earned a wildcard berth. In their first playoff run in over five years, they beat the A's in the wildcard game and took the mighty Astros to Game 5 of the American League Division Series. Although there was more work to be done, Tampa Bay demonstrated that they were a force to be reckoned with and weren't going away anytime soon. Once again, the Rays entered a big offseason and made a trio of key moves that would go on to define the team's identity in the next season. Their first, however, was admittedly a miss. Their first miss in a while. They sold high on Tommy Pham to acquire Hunter Renfro from the Padres. This trade would have been fine if not for the inclusion of Jake Cronenworth, who has turned into one of the best utility players in all of baseball. Renfro disappointed in his lone season with Tampa Bay in 2020, while Cronenworth finished runner-up in the Rookie of the Year voting and made back-to-back -back All-Star teams. However, they made up for it quickly with their next move just a month later. The Cardinals, known for their extremely hit-or-miss trades, took a risk by selling high on first baseman Jose Martinez and outfield prospect Randy Orozarena. In return, they got highly touted starting pitching prospect Matthew Liberator, a former first-round pick who made his debut in 2022. While time will tell how good he'll be, we're already all aware of the legend that is Randy Baby. A Rosarena went on to set World Series records in his first season with Tampa Bay and has been arguably the face of the franchise since this trade happened. He won Rookie of the Year in 2021 and posted back-to-back -back 2020 seasons for Tampa Bay. The Rays also traded a guy they had traded for just a year prior. With a surplus of bullpen help, Emilio Pagan became expendable and the Rays and Padres orchestrated another swap. This time, the Rays were likely the winner, acquiring Manuel Margot in the process. Margot put together his best years with the Rays as a solid power speed threat with a great glove. With the bullpen at the height of its powers, a fantastic defense, and breakout offensive seasons, the Rays had their best year in a while in the shortened 2020 season. They won the AL East and took out the Blue Jays, Yankees, and Astros on their way to their first World Series since 2008. Although they couldn't beat the Dodgers in the end, this season stood as a massive step forward, and a sign that their wheeling and dealing ways were certainly working. It's a shame we didn't get a full season of this team. It's hard to imagine how many games they would have won. Their galactic leap forward is also what made the 2020 offseason a bit shocking. Their first move was easily their biggest, dealing away their former Cy Young winning ace Blake Snell to the San Diego Padres after he had a terrific postseason. In all honesty, the haul they got in return has not
not panned out wonderfully since this deal, even with Snell not being as dominant in a Padres uniform. The key player Tampa Bay got in this transaction was pitching prospect Luis Patino, and while he has been inconsistent early on, he still shows flashes of brilliance and is only 23 years old. Catcher Francisco Mejia has also shown flashes of productivity, but I have to imagine that the Rays could have got a better package here for their former ace. The Rays also missed the mark with their next big swap with the Texas Rangers. In a 3 for 3 swap of mostly unremarkable prospects, the Rangers found a budding star in Nathaniel Lowe. Lowe broke out for Texas last season and had one of the best offensive seasons of any first baseman in 2022. We'll see how it pans out, but the Rays might have let a good slugger slip through the cracks with this move. They did, however, find a diamond in the rough in a quiet trade with their division rival, the Boston Red Sox. In a 2 for 2 swap, the Rays found one of their aces of the future in Jeffrey Springs. He was a solid reliever in 2021, but then Springs took the leap forward into one of the best pitchers in the American League last season and could build on that in 2023. But their biggest trade heading into 2021 was yet to come. With the season underway, the Rays held a 500 record two weeks into May before rattling off an 11-game win streak to go from fourth place to first place in the AL East. In the midst of this win streak, they made one of their biggest win-win trades. The Rays called up the Brewers to make a somewhat perfect swap, in my opinion. With Wander Franco waiting in the wings as the number one prospect in baseball, the Rays sent away the struggling Willie Adamas to Milwaukee in exchange for a pair of solid arms in J.P. Fireisen and Drew Rasmussen. Rasmussen was arguably the Rays' best starter last season, not named Shane McClanahan. Fireisen didn't allow a single run in 2022, and Willie Adamas has turned into one of the best shortstops in the National League and a much-needed star bat for Milwaukee. These are just wins all around. I love this trade. Tampa continued their winning ways into the trade deadline, where they sat 20 games over 500 atop the American League East and once again looking to buy. They made a splash with the Minnesota Twins, acquiring the power bat they were desperately needing in Nelson Cruz. He was about a league average hitter and came up with some big playoff moments, but what makes this swap hurt is the inclusion of Joe Ryan. Ryan looks like he's poised to become the future ace of the Twins after a promising start to his young career. The Rays made various other moves, but these were the major in-season acquisitions. They won 100 games in 2021 and claimed their division yet again in their best full season in years. However, their run came to a disappointing end with a 3-1 ALDS loss to the Red Sox, the same team they went 11-8 against during the regular season. From here, the trades get somewhat less significant. Before last season kicked off, they were able to find solid roster pieces in Harold Ramirez and Isaac Paredes. Ramirez and Paredes were both above league average hitters in their first real shot at sustained big league playing time, as Ramirez batted 300 and Paredes clubbed 20 home runs. Come the trade deadline, they stayed active again, swinging deals to snatch the veteran outfielder David Peralta from the Diamondbacks. This one didn't pan out so well, but the race still managed 86 wins and the final wildcard spot in the American League. But after getting ousted by a red-hot Guardians team, they entered yet another offseason of uncertainty. And that, finally, brings us to now. Dozens of transactions later, the Rays have opened up a contention window and have come inches from the biggest trophy in baseball. They're still chasing that goal and their trading habits don't seem to be stopping anytime soon. Still with a young star in Wander Franco, a dynamite rotation with tremendous upside, and their ever-present dominant bullpen, they will once again be a thorn in the side of the American League. I'm sure in a few years' time I'll have to update this video anyway. And if I was a betting man, I'd bet on the Rays since they seem to get undersold every preseason. Hey look, I'm on your screen now. How about that? Thank you to DraftKings for sponsoring today's video. Guys, MLB is around the corner, but we're still waiting for the NFL to wrap up, and I've become a football guy this year. My Giants have been really good. And for wildcard weekend bets, my go-to place is the DraftKings Sportsbook, the official sports betting partner of the NFL. To kick off the road to Super Bowl 57, new customers can bet just $5 and get $200 in free bets instantly. You can bet on my underdog Giants versus the Vikings or whatever your heart desires. Plus, all new and existing customers get a free no-sweat bet each day of the wildcard this weekend. You can place any NFL bet of your choice, and if it loses, you'll get a free bet back up to $10. Action so good, why bet on the playoffs anywhere else? Listen, baseball fans like you and me, we're waiting for those preseason bets so we can bet on the Cy Young and certain teams to win over 90 games, but for now, we'll deal with football. I'm going to watch a little bit of football. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use code JOLLY. New customers can bet just $5 on the NFL and get $200 in free bets instantly only at the DraftKings Sportsbook with code Jolly. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. See show notes for details in my description below. Thank you for watching today's video and I'll see you guys next time.